back to my channel. I'm James, and today we're going to be doing an exclusive review, in-depth analysis. I'm going to be doing my Blu-ray versus Blu-ray comparison in this video of a classic action-adventure sci-fi TV series. So I'm excited to announce we're going to deep dive into the Six Million Dollar Man, the complete remastered TV series on Blu-ray. And this is the first time it's ever been released in the US on Blu-ray. And we're also gonna be comparing this brand new remastered Blu-ray set too, to this one from Turbine Media. This is the original Blu-ray release by Turbine Media in Germany that I reviewed many, many years ago uh, when I actually went in and dived into this. Now, there are some things from that original review that have kind of changed since then, and I'll touch on that a little bit later on here in this exclusive video, but we are gonna be comparing image quality. I'm gonna do my Blu-ray versus Blu-ray image comparisons, talk to you about the difference in special features, what the new set has, what the old set had, kind of make this an ultimate comparison between all of the editions of Six Million Dollar Man that are available on Blu-ray and which one is truly the best option for you to spend your money on. Now before we get too deep into this video here, I did want to say a huge shout out and thank you to all of my VIP Club members. Without all of you, this video simply would not be possible. There's a lot of things that have been happening behind the scenes here on my YouTube channel, and I've been trying to share a lot of them in kind of update videos and things like that, but basically to keep the lights on and for me to be able to continue to create this content, this was a big deal, getting this VIP club membership off the ground, and I've been blown away by the support by all of you and those that have subscribed and joined the VIP club membership because that's how these types of videos are going to be possible going forward in the future. And that's a lot of the times due to because of how much work I put into these, and it's not just sitting there holding the case. It took me about three weeks of work to go through this entire set, do all my testing, get all my screenshots, get all this compiled together, make all of my lists and comparison lists. So it was a lot of work, but I have a huge shout out and thank you to all of you, my VIP club members, because again, without all of you, this video simply never would have happened. I just want to say thank you and welcome to this VIP club and this video is for all of you. Now, as a little hidden tidbit going forward, there's going to be some exciting things coming up for all of you, my Collectors VIP club members. So, you want to make sure to keep an eye here on the community section and also the VIP club section here because I will be announcing another big VIP club exclusive complete remastered TV series set that's only going to be exclusively reviewed here on my YouTube channel. And this is going to be a VIP club exclusive video as well. So this one's going to be coming up soon. I wanted to kind of give a little teaser here in this video so you knew to be excited about it. I'll give a little hidden tidbit about it. It's one of my favorite classic 1962 Western TV series that has never been completely remastered, restored, or released on Blu-ray anywhere worldwide. Nowhere. This is a brand new big deal. And I'm going to be getting that in here exclusively for all of you here on this YouTube channel and doing a video just like this that's a Collector's VIP Club exclusive. And this is something I plan on continuing to do as time goes forward. So you wanna make sure to stay a part of the VIP Club to keep supporting this channel because that is the only way I can keep these lights on and be able to afford to do videos like this. And I know you're gonna be really excited about the next one, especially all of you Western TV series lovers or any of you that love classic TV, this one's a big deal. Now to start off with, I'm going to show you the image presentation for the original Blu-ray release of Six Million Dollar Man from Turbine Media in Germany. And like I referenced a little while ago in the video, this review was done many, many years ago and there's actually a little hidden tidbit. I actually filmed that review about two years before I ever actually started this YouTube channel. Uh, those first about five to maybe seven videos, I filmed several years before I actually started this YouTube channel. There is some things we're going to touch on about that review, but that image you're seeing up above is this original actual Blu-ray release. Now, if you go back and watch that original video, there is some slight differences because I did not have all the technology, I did not have all the software to pull the data off of the disc, as well as I didn't have a way to test all of the discs that I do now. So those of you that have watched that original review of the original Six Million Dollar Man, you'll probably notice the screenshots on here look drastically different than they did in that original review. 
That's because those original screenshots, I had no way to accurately source them correctly. I was brand new at this. I didn't have all the hundreds of dollars in software I constantly paid for and hadn't tested it and done it for years like I have now. So keep that in mind. What you see up here is the native image that's on these discs unfiltered. So what that means is without all the stuff your TV can do to pump up the color or change the contrast, things like that, that's the native image you see on this. Now, the reason that's important to understand is because when we're comparing this original Turbine Media $6 million set to the new $6 million set by Shout Factory, which you're going to see up above a screenshot of that. There are some drastic changes between the two of them that really surprised me just in image quality wise. And I'm going to break down everything between both of these, but I'm not going to sit here holding both sets in my arms because I've been having a massive amount of pain lately and I'm dealing with a lot more pain and medical issues. So uh, because of my nerve damage, my ongoing nerve damage, I can't hold this set the whole time. It is extremely heavy, but we will go into the unboxing a little bit later on as well. For this setup here that you see, uh, this is actually the native image compared to the Turbine Media one. And there's actually some nice enhancements that I did notice on the image right away. Um, something you've probably noticed is the colors look much better in the Shout Factory. Um, and there's a couple of reasons that's due to, which we'll get into here, but basically the colors look better, the clarity is slightly better. Um, I will say similar film grain between both of them, though there are some scenes between both sets that did have some slight DNR it looked like. So uh, there is some areas where there wasn't much film grain. It seemed to maybe have been scrubbed and used with a one over at DNR, but because it was similar between both of them, I didn't use it as a detractor from this Shop Factory set because it was already on the Turbine Media one when I went back and forth between them. So you can't give one a plus or a minus because of either of those. Now, make sure to give this video a like and a thumbs up for me while I'm going through this. Also, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Though I kind of figure if you're watching this video, you're probably subscribed and have hit the bell notification by now. But just in case for some reason you haven't, make sure to go down there and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now, talking about that Shout Factory release there, basically it came with 33 Blu-rays in the set. So it definitely had a lot larger amount of Blu-rays that are included in the box set as compared to the Turbine Media one came with 12 Blu-rays. And that'll kind of affect some things here as we're going through this. But here's how one of the bigger things between the differences between them. Because of Shout Factory's release having 33 Blu-rays, the way they compressed it and the way they actually put it onto the discs, it does have a much higher average bitrate which affects the image and what you see with like fluctuations or you'll have things like blocking or compression issues. Those on the actual Shout Factory were not nearly noticeable like they were on the Turbine Media, which did have a very, very low bit rate. Basically, they tried to put as much content on those 12 Blu-ray discs as they possibly could. Um, and basically it does affect some of the things like there are some blocking, some artifacts, and some slight compression um, that you'll notice throughout it that um, just kind of show up throughout when you're watching it. Now, when I originally reviewed that, um, I didn't really have a way to test everything all of the time like I do now, where I can sit down and get side-by-side -side images of the same scenes and go through them. I just didn't at the time. I mean, you gotta remember years and years ago when I did that. So understand it is a learning process and that's where what I do has grown so much bigger over the years and so much more time goes into this. Like I said, for this video, it's taken me almost three weeks to get everything completed on this. Well, after going through those side-by-sides, that's where you do notice on the Turbine Media that because of that very low bit rate, this one had a much higher bit rate. You lost a lot of the problems that you incurred through that Turbine Media one. The Shout Factory one has resolved and there's no real noticeable artifacting, blocking, compression issues that came up. Now, I'm not gonna say there wasn't any ever. There was a few instances um, kind of in the movies, the pilot films, and then the later on ones uh, that were at the end of the series, the kind of like bringing back the bionic uh, woman and then uh, Six Million Dollar Man and combining them together in the movies that came later on after the series ended. Um, there are some slight blocking uh, and some slight compression, but it wasn't horrible. Uh, whereas on the actual turbine media, it was way more noticeable. So that was a big plus for the Shout Factory over the turbine media. Now talking about the Shout Factory here, uh, it does have a downside to the audio. It was slightly sharp and tinny sounding audio mix, just slightly. And remember when I'm going through this for all of you, um, this is me being 
extra nitpicky for all of you. When I'm doing my testing and sitting them side by side, I'm being extra picky here. Some of you might not notice, depending on your audio setup, what you're listening it out of. If you're listening out of a regular TV with no audio soundbar or even audio surround sound, things like that, you might not pick up on some of these things like with the audio. But for me, I noticed it, so therefore I am going to always bring it up. But do keep in mind, some of this is just me being extra picky for all of you because I know all of you love to know every little thing in and out, good and bad. Well, in this case, this one is a downside for the Shout Factory. I actually thought the audio mix was slightly, just slightly, tinnier and sharp compared to the Turbine audio mix for English at least. The English DTS audio mix on both of them. Uh, Turbine one on that one, it just sounded just slightly softer and not as tinny or sharp. Now keep in mind at the end of all of this, I'm going to talk about the review scores between both the Turbine and the Shout Factory release. So that way you get an idea of which one comes out the winner and everything like that. So at the end of the video, I always do my exclusive review scores, which sums up so you know how this compares to all the dozens and hundreds of other things I've reviewed over the years. On the Shout Factory release, it is Region A locked. Now. On the Turbine Media release, that one was region free. So another one up that the Turbine release was region free for my worldwide audience because no matter where you are worldwide, that Turbine one you could play it in any Blu-ray player anywhere worldwide, whereas Shout Factory did region A lock all of the discs that I tested through the set were region A locked. Now, for those of you that live outside of the US that want to import this after watching this video, as always, I will have the links for these posted in the description section right below this video and as a pinned comment. Now, this is a Amazon exclusive Blu-ray release, and this is something Amazon has been doing more and more recently. I just recently talked about it in my Hawaii Five O complete series set review. That was an Amazon exclusive Blu-ray remastered TV series set. This is another one. It seems like Amazon is getting a lot of these exclusives now, and it seems like this is gonna be going on more and more. Now, that link I've posted down there is the direct Amazon link, no matter where you live worldwide. That's the only link you're gonna be able to buy it from to have it shipped to you worldwide from Amazon. So, if you wanna get that, it's down in the description section right below this video after you get done watching this video. And as a pinned comment in the comment section below, you can click on it through there. It takes you straight out to Amazon. I've made it nice and easy for you. Now, if you live outside of the US and after watching this, you do want to get it, remember you can get a multi-region or region-free Blu-ray player to play all of these in. So that way in your country, you can enjoy this set as well, depending on which one you decide after watching this, that is the best option for you. I do talk about those on this YouTube channel. I've reviewed several of them and I always post them in the description section right below each video as well. The links for the exact region-free and multi-region Blu-ray and 4K players that I personally use and recommend. So if that's something you want to know more about, there's tons of that content here on my YouTube channel as well. Now one of the biggest bonuses of this new Shout Factory remastered Blu-ray set here is that it does contain the full uncut, unedited episodes on all of the episodes for the entire series. It also contains the syndicated versions of all three of the pilot films. So all three of the first pilot films are all in the syndicated versions. Otherwise, the rest of the episodes in here are fully uncut, fully unedited. They are not missing any scenes. They are really nice that they're back to the way they should have been. Well, that's a downside for Turbine, and this is where I'm talking about my original review. Well, that's a downside for Turbine Media, and here's why. The Turbine Media Germany set does have edited and cut down episodes. They cut those down between 30 seconds all the way up to five minutes on some episodes are missing from them. They edited them out for content. And I hate that as all of you know as being a collector and a cinephile, I hate when things are edited and cut down. And that's the case of that Turbine Media one. So big win for this set because this is the first set ever released worldwide of $6 million man that is completely unedited uncut down. There is no cuts out of it. They didn't take 30 seconds out of an episode. I went through and was watching it and it's a revelation compared to the turbine how much you really realize is missing and cut out of how many episodes that is now available on this new Blu-ray set. So a big win for Shout Factory on that over the turbine media release. But that's where it comes to the Shout Factory's runtime. Now for Shout Factory runtime, you're looking at about 93 hours total runtime for the complete series set of Six Million Dollar Man, including the films and the TV films at the beginning, the pilot films. Um, that's your total runtime. So that's where I was talking about cut down content 
for the Turbine Media. Now, Turbine Media roughly has 87 hours. Your runtime on that, you're looking at right around that 87 hours, which is quite a bit less than what you have on the Shout Factory. It shows you how much they edited down, though there is a slight difference on some of the crossover episodes because those were edited down and there was, if I remember correctly, one of the crossover episodes missing for the Bionic Woman and Six Million Dollar Man that all of them are included and I'm happy to announce it's another big win for the Shout Factory. All crossover episodes, all of the reunion movies, all of the pilot films, they are all included in the Shout Factory release. So another big win for the Shout Factory release there. Now on the Shout Factory releases, you've probably noticed with their screenshot comparisons above, Shout Factory release does have better color overall to the image versus the actual one from Turbine Media. Now, Turbine Media I always thought looked pretty darn good, but it's not until you actually notice and they sit side by side where you can see those screenshot comparisons. And when I sat down and did it, that's where you really notice it. And that's why I think these are such an interesting thing and why it takes me so much time to create all this for all of you, but you can see it for yourself is that those colors on the Shout Factory look so much better than even what the Turbine Media did. And I think that has to do with compression and the amount of content and data they put on the disc. Because they put a lot less data, obviously bitrate and everything else into the Turbine Media one, that you have so much more room because there's way more discs available space to put the content that Shout Factory did for their Blu-rays. They're able to do a better color grading. Um, everything just looks overall better on it. Now, something else I did notice was on Shout Factories, it was a more stable image throughout the entire series. So on Turbine Media, there was slight fluctuations in the image. And what that is, is when you're watching a TV show or a movie, it'll have where it kind of looks like the image is almost vibrating a little bit. And you'll see it in like the film grain, it kind of just vibrating down the screen, kind of looking like rolling grass with wind blowing across it. But you'll see vibrations in the actual image itself. Well, on the Shout Factory one, that's gone. I did not notice any major fluctuations. Now, there were some slight ones because of the age of the film and the scan. They could see some slight ones, but nothing big. Whereas on the Turbine Media one, there's a lot of heavy fluctuations throughout the entire series that now when I was going through doing my testing side by side and seeing them, you could really notice all those fluctuations throughout the image that appear throughout the entire series. They're gone on the Shout Factory, and that's another big win for the Shout Factory. Now talking about special features, there's hours upon hours of special features and bonus features on the Shout Factory release. As opposed to on the Turbine Media one, it's very, very limited. Um, there is not too much content at all. So big win for the Shout Factory, you get things like new audio commentaries that they specifically did for this release. You've got things like bonus episodes from Bionic Woman. You've got behind the scenes, trailers. You've got scenes from basically when they would show little clips on TV excerpts and TV spots and things like that. There's a lot of bonus features in this set that were not included in that Turbine one at all. So in that case, another win for the Shout Factory release. Now, talking about a downside, and this is a big downside. Now, for that Shout Factory release, I'm gonna show you the menu of it. The menu is absolutely horrible. It is an SD, and I mean SD, quality image with SD writing that is very tiny, very hard to read, very hard to see, and I'm looking at it on a 70 inch and bigger TVs. If you have a smaller TV, you better get your magnifying glass out. It is that bad and that poor of a menu that Shout Factory did for this release. I am actually very, very surprised, but uh, I have great vision. Uh, my wife doesn't, but she couldn't see it at all. I had a really hard time seeing it. So that was a big downside for the Shout Factory as opposed to, I'll show you the Turbine Media menu here. Now Turbine Media obviously has a lot of it in German. Um, you can pretty well understand what it's saying, but at least it was an HD image. It's clear with a light colored background and darker writing so it was easier to see. And the writing is big enough you can actually see it. Well, downside for what Shout Factory did is their menus on all of the discs are absolutely horrendous. Um, I don't know who made those up. They must have been looking with a microscope as they were typing that in and using the smallest font possible, let alone, and I'm gonna harp on this for a minute, but let alone, what in the world were you thinking? Putting little blocks and lines the same color on that menu, then using the same color writing in tiny and putting it over those blocks and lines, which go through like the T's and the I's and the L's 
and the K's, anything with lines in it. You can't even read what it is. You have to guess a lot of the times and what it even says after you click on like the episode titles. And I'll show you that picture up there of the episode titles. And I mean, it's hard to read a lot of those and some of those might be okay, but as you get along, some of those are really hard to even read what they are. So really disappointed in the menu and that menu is absolutely horrible. But good news is once you get past the menu, at least the show plays fine and it looks good, but be aware that the menu is very difficult to see. Now talking about the discs inside this box set, there is something that I noticed that I'm gonna point out for all of you, and this is something that Shout Factory is kind of getting known for, which is another bad thing. When I got my turbine release, none of the discs were scratched, damaged, and they didn't have any smudgy or greasy fingerprints on them, um, though I always clean my discs and always suggest to, but they didn't come scratched up. Well. On the actual discs of the Six Million Dollar Man, almost every single disc in here has slight scuffs and scratches on it. Now, are they so bad that they affected the playback? I went through all of my discs and none of them were so horribly bad that it was really causing like blocking or any issues with playback, though they are noticeable when you go to clean them. Now, you will have to clean them off. You can't skip over that part. And I've actually created a video here on this YouTube channel that tells you exactly how to do it without damaging your disc, without spending tons of money and how to do it correctly. Um, and that video is available, it's called How to Properly Clean Your Blu-rays, 4Ks, and Your Discs. Well, on that video, what I found on this is, is it's the same thing that Shout Factory has been doing a lot of. Whoever handles their disc has really greasy fingerprints because as I took each disc out and was holding it up to light, you can see these like greasy palms all over it. Now, I tested it to see what happened when I played it. I did have playback issues and playback errors when I did play it before I cleaned it. And then I cleaned that exact same disc, went back to the same scenes, playing the exact same things, it was gone. So the thankful thing is, is it seems like a lot of the playback issues and things that I did have initially were simply from what I thought they were, which is what I talk about in that video of how to properly clean your disc is from the smudgy fingerprints that, because I use a Panasonic UB820, a lot of those high-end 4K or Blu-ray players really scan to take out every little piece of data and image they can off of those discs. And if there's something, a film or something on the disc, it'll affect that playback. Well, in this case, it did. I had to clean every single one of these discs, so all 33, and it took me a long time to do them carefully and go through each one. But once I got rid of all the greasy fingerprints, uh, they played fine, though I will say it does disappoint me and it is an upsetting thing to find that every single disc had light scuffs on it. Now some of you it's going to be to varying degrees how much you like that or dislike that or if you care at all. I mean as a collector I'd like them to have no scratches or scuffs because I like to keep things in the best condition possible. But in that case at least the scuffs were not deep enough on my discs that I needed a replacement. But you will notice that as far as yours come, I'm assuming everybody's gonna get the same thing because that seems to be what Shout Factory has been known for. Whoever handles their discs, they always have slight scuffs, um, patches of scuffs on them. Kinda just looks like abrasive on it is what it looks like. And then just greasy fingerprints all over it. That does affect playback. So make sure you watch that other video so you know how to clean them. So that way you make sure to clean your discs. Otherwise you will have some playback issues. But another downside, for the Shout Factory release. On the Shout Factory release, another downside is the Shout Factory release did not come with a booklet. Turbine Media on the opposite side had a very nice episode guide and booklet in it, and some of it's in English, and I really liked their episode guide. It was really nice. I talked about it in the original review. I did like how the episode titles were in English, so that way you knew where they were. But that was an upside for the Turbine Media. I really do like these booklets. Shout Factory didn't give us anything like that. Now, talking about the differences again between the two of them, Shout Factory's boxing is a very thin cardboard on the outside. Whereas Turbine Media, you get this very nice, thick, hard cardboard outside that the cases go into. But talking about this, this is where the trade-off comes in. I do like how Shout Factory did a bunch of individual cover arts that are each different on their Blu-ray cases versus you just getting the same cover art on each of the cases in the Turbine Media. So in that case, I'll give the one up to the actual Shout Factory release. I do like these cases. I like the cover art. I like how they're individual. They say $6 million man with an image of them on the side and the season. And then it goes into the back talking about all the bonus features, 
per one listed on it, whereas opposed to the Turbine Media is just listing everything out on the back of the case, very small print. So that was a big win for Shout Factory. I do like these individual cases for the seasons. So I guess giving up the booklet and giving up the harder outside of the case, I guess we do get the cases individually. And on the inside of these cases, you do get behind the discs, the actual themselves. You can see through the blue, it talks about the episode titles when they aired. So it's kind of like Shout Factory put that booklet, but on the inside of the case of each case. So each case does list out what the episode titles are, when they aired, things like that. So I guess in that case it's okay. I just don't like having it behind the disc. I'd rather have it as a separate booklet. Now, between the Shout Factory and the Turbine Media, they both did have some very brief audio lags and audio delays on some of the episodes. They seemed to match up between both sets when I would find them, I'd go and find out the other set, and it seemed to match up. They're very slight. They're not going to be obtrusive to where there are huge things you'll be like, oh, that was horrible. It seems like whenever Universal did the original scan of the film elements, which they both seem to be drawing from, uh, they then had that same audio issue and audio lag between it. So I can't give one win to the other one on that. They both contain the same things on those. So you're not getting one up on either one, but you will notice throughout the entire series, there are some slight ones, uh, but that is due to it seems to be the original elements that were used to create these masters. Uh, simply that each company did a little bit of work to them slightly differently, how they compressed them, what they did on the discs, colors, things like that. So in that case, neither one wins something extra over that. Same thing between both sets. You do get several scenes throughout each episode almost. I mean, the movies, the telefilms, all of those, there is throughout the entire series scenes that will go to SD quality. That is because the original film elements were in SD for those certain scenes. They're very brief, but you will notice them throughout episodes. Um, I kind of talked about it briefly in the MacGyver complete series review when I had mentioned that there's a lot of elements they'll use for like action scenes of like a plane flying by that was filmed in SD that wasn't theirs that maybe they'd use on five TV shows and five different TV shows that were action shows would use that same scene randomly through their episodes. Well, that is why when it was on TV, it had those SD and there's nothing they can go back and scan that's in HD. So they did the best they could by upscaling it, but you will see scenes throughout that go to SD. It doesn't mean it was done wrong. That's the same way it is with most shows from those eras is, is that's just how it was. Um, MacGyver had it, Mission Impossible had it. I mean, most shows that I can even think of that were action shows when they would show things like bombers or planes or somebody parachuting out of a plane or like a tank exploding. A lot of the times those were SD images that they were using for that. So just keep that in mind. It's not that something's wrong. The same thing appears on the Turbine Media as it does on the Shout Factory. Those aren't ever gonna go away and those aren't ever gonna be changed. So I'm gonna point that out right now because I did get a lot of people on MacGyver that really just didn't understand that. That's just the way film was filmed back then. Now, to talk about this Turbine Media release here for a minute. Originally when I reviewed it, I talked about that I'd made that video over four years ago. Well, like I had explained, I didn't have all the software and equipment that I do nowadays that I spend hundreds upon hundreds of hours going and digging into these sets and movies and doing all this exclusive content. Well, now that I'm able to test all of these and kind of dissect these discs more, and that's where I talked about my analysis of things that I go into on these is so much more comprehensive and in-depth than it ever was many, many years ago. Well, when I originally reviewed this set, I gave this set a 9.1. And this is pretty rare. Usually I'm pretty darn close as time goes on. I was pretty darn good back then, even so that I didn't have all the equipment. Well, this is one of those rare instances that I gave a review score for something that now, after all of the testing and everything that I go through and all the hundreds of things I've tested over the years, especially TV series, um, this original set does not hold up as a 9.1. And to be honest with you, I'm going to rescore it right now because it shouldn't have been a 9.1. I just didn't have all of the data or software or everything else to test it the way that I do now. So this should have been an 8.1. So the Turbine Media release with the revised review score that it should have gotten after my testing that I've done now, based on all of the hundreds upon hundreds of things I've tested and reviewed over the years, the proper review score for this is an 8.1. Because of the edited down and missing content, the cut down episodes, all of the like compression and blocking and artifacting that appear throughout the episode, the colors, things like that. And just because they shoved it all into 12 Blu-ray discs, yes, I was very happy that at least it was released and that I got to own it. But 
knowing that all that stuff is on there and all of the review scores I've done over the years to make it pair with everything the way it should properly, this is actually only an 8.1. You'll understand why that's important here when I get into the rest of this, but understand that this review score for this set now is actually an 8.1 because it shouldn't have ever been rated a 9.1 to begin with. That was way too high. I just didn't have a way to test her to see all of that to be able to tell the difference between it because it was only, I think, my second video I'd ever made over four years ago. And we all make mistakes, so be understanding in that case. I'm at least admitting that that review score for this at that time was too high. Now diving into the $6 million set just on its own here. I do like the cover art on it. It says Collector's Edition. It says $6 million Man on it, Universal. And this is an official Universal release, just like the Turbine Media one was. I automatically showed you the back, though I will give another ding for the Shop Factory. They put a sticker on here, which covers up half of the words of the description of the show, and it doesn't come off without ripping it, so I left my sticker on there, though it does irritate me because I do not like that sticker. It's like for a transparency app, they want you to scan or something, but anyhow, be warned that sticker is on there. Now, like I was talking about, I do like how they have individual cases for all of them, and then the movies at the end, the reunion films, are in a white separate Blu-ray case on their own. And I do like how they each have their individual cases. That's a one that I really did like that Shout Factory did for this release. Now I already showed you season one, so I'm gonna show you season two here. As I said, it's different cover art, different cover art on the side, and then it talks about the show with all the special features listed out on the back. Now, aspect ratio is in 1.33 to 1. They didn't cut it down or edit that or change that at all. Same thing for the actual Turbine Media. That was in its original aspect ratio as well. So again, neither one gets a one up on that. Uh, but nice thing is, is the aspect ratio stayed the same. Now, when you get inside, same disc art. The only difference is, is they change the colors of each disc in each season to match the colors of the outside of the case. So this says season two on it. And then it also says disc one. So the nice thing is each season you can't get mixed up which discs go in which set. So I did like that they color coded all of those and put the name of the season on the discs as well. So that was a nice thing that Shout Factory did as well. Season three here, got green on it, side spine. And then obviously here's your back cover. Now mentioning about the audio mix, this does have English DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 mono. They both have English DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 Mono. Difference is, the actual Turbine one has English and German audio mix. This one from Shout Factory only has English audio mix. So, in that case, if you want the German audio mix, that one is the only one that has it available as the Turbine Media. Shout Factory elected only to do English audio. Inside the cases, you get green discs here. Same thing says Season 3 on it. Season four here, I do like the purple. This one's a lot thicker because there is more content in this. And then when you get inside here, it does have your purple discs, which I did like this case. And again, it lists off your episode titles and the year they aired. Season five here with the rocket ship going up, shows it on the side, obviously listing off the back here. And then inside, you get your orange discs. And then for the last case here, it's the reunion films. Shows it on the side, and then obviously talks about the return of the $6 million man and bionic woman, bionic showdown, the $6 million man and the bionic woman, and bionic ever after. And it does say on bionic ever after a new 2K scan of the original negative. So I do think that this might be a release they're gonna release separately is my guess. Because when Shout Factory does a lot of those like scans separately of certain films, it makes you wonder if they're gonna release this separately because it's in a different case, a different artwork and everything on its own for those that might just want to have the films on Blu-ray. So that might be something that comes out here in the future. And when you get inside here, it is on two Blu-ray discs and they are in gray. Now, talking about the discs themselves, like I did mention, all of the discs in this entire set are region A locked in Shout Factory set. Now, on the Shout Factory $6 million man set, you do get for subtitles, English subtitles, but only English subtitles. Now. On the Turbine Media set, you get German subtitles, but only German subtitles. So neither one of the sets really gets a one-up because they only have subtitles for the country they were originally released in. So for those of you that need English subtitles, this is the set you're gonna wanna get versus the Turbine Media only has German subtitles. Now, the Six Million Dollar Man ran from 1973 to 1994 with the reunion films, and it's a pretty epic series. Though I will say I didn't really love the original three pilot films as much as I liked the TV series. The TV series for me was always where it was at. The pilot 
Bond films, they're a varying degree of quality. Um, you kind of feel like they're trying to spoof James Bond kind of in some of them, and then you're feeling like they're trying to spoof something else. It just, to me, it was too mixed mashed together. Whereas I feel like the TV series really set into a groove and did a good job um, keeping the character moving, involving you in him, and keeping it more of a sci-fi elements along the way as well. So I do really feel like the TV series I enjoyed way more than the three pilot films were. But then once it got going, it's a really fun series, action adventure sci-fi series. Um, and it is one of those shows that I enjoy watching over and over again. The nice thing about Shout Factory's release is they included all of the crossover episodes as well in it. So when you're watching through this set, you get all your crossover episodes in there as well, so you don't have to pop out different discs, go to different sets, find the crossovers, come back. They're all included in this Blu-ray set, completely remastered in full 1080p HD. Now, for my review score for the $6 million man, the complete TV series that's been remastered and released on Blu-ray by Shout Factory, this gets a review score of a 9.0. So, the reason it's important to understand why I referenced that original review score from Turbine Media's release, because that one only got an 8.1, that makes a big difference because that release had a lot of things wrong with it that have now been fixed, like not having to cut down and edited content and everything else that's on this new Blu-ray release does make this a worthy upgrade over the Turbine as well as if you don't own the Turbine, this is the one I would recommend buying, especially if you can get a hold of a region-free player outside of the U.S. Now, everyone that lives in Region A Canada, the U.S., Mexico, all Region A territory, you can get this no problem. You don't need a region-free player. It's just for those that are outside of Region A, because it is Region A locked, you will need a region-free player. So if you're in the U.K. and you're watching this video, you're going to want to make sure you get a region-free player so you can enjoy the $6 million man in the best quality it's been released in. Now, there are some things, like I said, you'll notice along the way, slightly tinny audio mix and things like that. Um, those are gripes that Shout Factory didn't do. And when you get your discs, if they're scuffed up and you have obviously fingerprints all over them, make sure to clean them and make sure to watch that video how to do it properly so you don't scratch it up any worse. So there are some downsides to the Shout Factory, which is why it could only earn a 9.0. I do recommend buying it and picking it up and supporting this release. I don't know how long Shout Factory is going to release this for, and this is one of those questions I get asked a lot. There are a lot of these studios that will remaster and release Blu-rays and TV series and movies even, and they'll release them for a short time. So on the outside of this case, it does say Collector's Edition. Shout Factory is notorious for they'll release something for about a year, maybe six months, and then they'll say, hey, it's going in our out of print sale. Once it goes out of print, they never print it again. So I don't know if this is going to be one of those titles that eventually goes into their out of print sale. So make sure if you're waiting to decide to buy this, this is the best edition to buy. Even with all the little hiccups and things that Shout Factory did, I still recommend this one over the Turbine Media as the ultimate way to watch the $6 million man. That link I've posted in the description section and it has a pinned comment in the comment section below is the Amazon exclusive link. As I said, this is an Amazon exclusive release. Again, seems like this is going to be a continuing thing going forward. So you'll have to click through that link down there to get it shipped to your home. And it should ship worldwide through that link because Amazon does ship worldwide just like they do when I order from Germany and things like that. So no matter where you live worldwide, that's the only link you're gonna be able to ship from. You go down there, it'll ship it to your home worldwide. Now, this is one of those shows I'm kind of curious if it's your favorite show, if it's not, what your thoughts are on the series. Let me know how excited you were for this review and how excited you were for this in-depth analysis and comparison to give you the best overall comparison of what the $6 million man looks like on Blu-ray. But the image on this is a worthy upgrade over the turbine, especially because they didn't compress it and shove it down onto so few discs. Because this Shout Factory $6 million man Blu-ray set does shine through with a much better, crisper, clearer image with the colors that look so much better on average on this than what they did on the turbine because they didn't over compress it and shove it onto too few of a disc. So I really appreciate that Shout Factory did that and I do enjoy this series. Make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below. Let me know how excited you were for this Collector's VIP Club exclusive video. And this is something that like I've explained to keep the lights on here for me to be able to keep doing this, 
I'm gonna have to release some more of these and keep doing this for Collectors VIP Club members so that this helps my channel to continue to grow. I can't afford to do this without all of your support, my Collectors VIP Club members, and I really wanna say thank you so much. If you decide after watching this you do want to give a super thanks, you can always still give a super thanks down below. There's a button down there, you click on that, it allows you to give a tip of any amount. But all of that goes into this channel and that's the only way is through your support that I can even make this because this video is not possible at all without you, my VIP club members support. So I just want to say absolutely thank you so much. I'm blown away by the support and how many of you were excited about this and I've got some really exciting stuff planned. Some very exciting VIP Club members exclusive videos that it's kind of in the vein of this. It's gonna be a comparison, but it's gonna be about something that you've never thought was gonna be remastered on Blu-ray. I was thrilled, I was absolutely thrilled. A classic Western, man, it's an exciting one that's coming up that I'm gonna have a hard time holding it in and not telling all of you for a little while. But I wanna kinda of draw it out to get you all excited. So make sure if you're gonna pick it up, click through one of those links I posted below. That does help just a little bit, tiny, tiny bit to this YouTube channel as well. And that's at no extra cost to you. So remember, when you click those Amazon links, it doesn't charge you anything extra, not even a penny, but it helps this channel just a little bit. I hope all of you have a blessed day. I've always got something new and exciting coming out very soon.